the first step I want to introduce you to the research project OPAC, which was the base for that product development of the Code Sysdepictor. Picture. Then I will show you some use cases for this new product. I will present you the capabilities and how to use it, the working principles. So let's start with the introduction. The Code Sys Depictor was developed under the project for that uh, German government for economy and energy under the name Open Engineering Platform for Autonomous Mechatronic Automation Components in a Function-Oriented Architecture. So this is a project which was uh, promoted by the government in order to promote the industrial internet technologies in Germany and uh, there are some project partners which work together and you see that one base of that project is the CODES development system which is the basic software for that project. The project contents contain the idea of realizing a very easy and intuitive interaction of the user who is thinking in technology not in programming and to offer him a possibility to realize his complete automation by the way of uh, function elements, functional elements with an automatic code generation and uh, the, the main idea, the main vision is to enable the automotive specialist not to need to think in abstract dimensions and IT terms anymore but in the functionality of the system he automates. So what the aim is to make it easier, cheaper and faster for him to realize his application not by the means of software but by the means of functional elements he just combines. And the first product which was the result of that research project is now this Kutz's Depictor which is such an approach in the direction of Industry 4.0 as we call it here in Germany. So this is an add-on product for the Kutz's development system which is available in the Kutz's store. You can immediately access on it and it's seamlessly integrated in the Kutz's Codes development system. So we see here in a small screenshot of the Codes object tree and you see that there is a new object, a depictor object which uh, may have a name and uh, bring some functionality with it and this is the topic of the next 20-30 minutes. The configuration of that depictor object is of course done as well directly in the Codes PLC project and it can be as well be part of libraries, so as I've done it here, I've put a certain depictor object into a library and it can be accessed out of my configuration. But all of this we will see later on more in detail. Before we start about talking how to use the depictor, I want to show you the use cases and this should give you a first impression why this product could be interesting for you. With the Codes Depictor, we have a very comfortable possibility to generate attractive 3D demonstrations of applications directly in your IC61131 PLC programming system. So this is very useful for any kind of presentations, explanations, as well as basic evaluations for applications in their operational mode. So you can already check the essential movement, have a certain collision survey, on the one hand, and on the other hand, you can have an application-independent way to modeling your machine concepts. So this could be useful already in the development of the machine, of the application, or in the visual diagnosis, and as well in training situations. So in the basic evaluation, the code is depicted, may give your first visual impressions of the working machine. You see here a screenshot of such a first impression but of course I don't want to show you just slides. We just go online to the codes project I've already prepared and this is exactly the project I had in the screenshot here. And you see that we have here a certain process of different robots with a conveyor belt and uh, if we look at it that this robot will put a certain device on a conveyor belt, it's pushed to the next station, there we have some gluing and you see you can immediately take a look at this gluing a little bit more closely from different angles. Here there is another working 
tile put on that material and uh, the next robot it's screwed so let's put it just from the other side that you see now I have a really an easy way here to see my machine concept we have here the possibility to model complete machine architectures and this gives us of course a very handy glimpse of the different machine parts which are interacting and it shows us the specific movements which we can immediately configure to the real hardware even if it's not yet available so what we've seen here is that this complete robot manufacturing street is working without any physical hardware nevertheless it's working on the real application which is realized on the base in this case of code to soft motion you see here we have a certain list of different drives which are represented inside the robots in here and this animation is done on the variables of this IC61131 application. Now we have first check in order to prevent collisions. Another use case we may realize machine concepts or presentations for example for training purposes or for testing during application development here I have another screenshot shot which I want to show you in the live mode now this could be a mobile application with a building crane and you see here that we have here some buildings unfortunately I'm missing the color definition of this models here therefore they're all white but nevertheless we see that we can immediately include such models coming from any 3d CAD software and what is realized here that this crane cat as we call it here is moving to a certain lane and we can realize whether there is a collision or not and we easily see that there is no collision and you see moving rotating it's very easy and it's extremely fast and uh, this is not a matter of the CPU performance of my computer in here it's just fast working on a special engine for 3D object so with the code depictor we have a conceptual visualization at your hands which makes it easy for marketing and sales purposes to convince your customer that the machine is working as you promise it yeah and you can even show it for visual diagnosis for example for showing defect machine parts inside the machine in case you have such a 3d model available now let's take a look at the capabilities how can we realize the modeling <clears throat> the first step the modeling is realized on the base of a model library perhaps we take a look at it for example I insert a new pose and a new element and if you click on that element here in that box that was per default inserted and I click here in order to select another such model I can take a look inside that model library we see here that we have a depictor base library which brings us some base elements for example a torus a sphere which is nothing else than a, a ball then a plane element cylinder element cone box and an aluminium profile and what we see here that there is a special library coming with our soft motion add-on which offers already some more complex models especially for such robots and you see here that even in my POU pool there are a list of elements available depictor objects which you can immediately use Now, how's the modeling done? It's done on the base of geometrical dependency and movements in a very easy tree-like view. So let's go back. Now we see here the tree, and we see here that we have here the 
the picture element and below there we have special static elements and we have special poses, so-called poses, which may convent, uh, content then certain the picture objects. And these objects below such a pose, they are now animated on the base of translations and rotations and scalings. So this is exactly what I want to show you. You can do the animation on the base of IC variables and therefore we use that translations, rotations and scalings. And what you can do is really reuse other depictor models within other objects via so-called interfaces. So for example, you take such a belt here. This belt was realized in my POU pool and it overgives a certain interface in order to define special parameters of that belt. And in the usage here, I get this interface and I can feed that interface with the variables or with the values I want to use it here in that pose. Okay, this is now a little bit theory. Now let's try to insert an element ourselves. Oh, it's already in here because I've already put it in. Let's remove it so you really see that this was my new element. So you see there's nothing in here. We insert that box again. Here it is. It's tiny and small. So at first step I want to scale it a little bit bigger. And uh, perhaps we give it a red color. So you have the possibility to recolor it here by the configuration. And of course it's not a good idea to have it immediately inside the belt. So perhaps we move it a little bit to the left. Therefore I need a translation into the Y direction. So have it beside that belt. Now in order to show you how easy it is to animate this new box, I want to connect it with the same variable as the belt is moved by. So therefore I use that drive here. Just copy the name of the drive. Those of you who know already Code to Soft Motion, they know that all drives in Code to Soft Motion are represented by a, by a generated variable structure which is represented by its name. So in case I want to use a position of that drive, then I can immediately use it by inserting that translation here. And then we include or integrate that um, translation into the X direction copy the name of the drive in here and in that structure by typing a dot we receive the IntelliSense functionality we can immediately search for F act position, the actual position and you see that our box is no longer here, it was moved up there and it's moved in parallel to the movement of that conveyor belt here. So, no matter where the variables come from, in this case it's coming from that axis which was calculated by Code to Soft Motion, I just need to configure the variable I want to use for the animation inside that translation here. And you see that there are some more possibilities. I can use a translation, X rotation, Y rotation, Z rotation, scaling and even a combined movement or animation, this is all possible in here. And everything is done on the basis of IC variables. So just to show you, it's, in this case we have a soft motion application, but it's not limited to soft motion. It's just any variable. And what you could do in here is, is of course, as well, have some, some other calculations inside that expression here, just to mention that. Okay, let's come back to the presentation. You see that there is no need for a man your lighting, this is all done by an engine which is running behind here. And I want to show you the working principle, how we can really use that Kutz's depictor. You've already seen that I have inserted such a pose and such an element. Now some more words about that terms. There are these two principal geometrical elements, the pose. A pose is a relative position in relation to its parent pose. 
So we see here the parent pose, and we see here these small jumpers here. They are the, the child poses, which may contain then other elements or, again, other poses combined with elements. The elements in themselves define the ge geometrical object with the graphical information, and they can be a child of a pose. The tree itself is now built up on poses and elements and having that hierarchical dependency to each other. Yeah, talking about the geometrical information, I've already shown you that there is a standard library available, but of course we do not want to draw everything ourselves. Perhaps you have in your company already CAD designers who realize the geometrical or the, the, the mechanical construction of your machine parts, of robots, of cages, of whatever is inside your machines, of any mechatronic object. In case they have that modeling available, they could export it in three different file formats. There's the DAE, the Collada file format, the object in the wavefront format, or the 3DS in the 3DS Max format. These are three standard 3D tools or designing tools, CAD tools, which you can reuse. There is a limitation that only for the object files realized in the wavefront format, we have the full support. So therefore, as well, I used this object file format for the small example I will show you in a minute. I can reference another depictor object. We already mentioned that in the PRU pool or in the library. And we have the possibility to reference to interfaces of the objects through elements and other depictor objects. Now the pose transformations, they define its relative position to its parent pose via the transformation. And we've already seen that we have the tra translation the rotation and the scaling, and the combination of these three transformations. And all these animations work on the IC variables. Now let's go back to the live mode. You've already seen my box here, which is still moving. Yes, it is. I have prepared another small example, which some of you might already know. We have a so-called quick start project, which shows how to program a garage door, an electric garage door. Perhaps I go online with that small project, and I'll show you how this works. So, so this is the standard functionality. You see the door moving here in our standard Visual, Kutz's visualization, which is already nice, but it's not that nice that we are fully satisfied. Therefore, we have realized here in the, the left part a depictor model. We see the garage door being moved in a three-dimensional way. And of course, in the opposite to my standard Kutz's visualization, I can really rotate around and scroll in and see that this is working as it should. Now, when I had my first approach to that Coates' depictor, I knew that project quite well. Therefore, I was quite happy to see that there's already a depictor animation available for this. But, um, of course, I wanted to have a car in. Therefore, I decided to, to design a car myself. And I have to admit then, that I'm not a big car designer. I will show you the results of that. I just switched the result visible. And perhaps we make the walls invisible, so we see a little bit more of the car itself. You see how easy that works. I can easily remove that. And what I've done, I have animated that car here by a slider in my standard visualization, so I can easily move it out in parallel to the standard codes visualization. But in the opposite here, you can really go around and see how it looks like. So this is my, my car. To be honest, I'm no car designer. Otherwise, this car would look a little bit nicer. And if we stopped here with car designing, 
then we sh should not discuss any more about industrial internet. <laughs> Nevertheless, I want to show how you can easily design things like that. So I have here my PRU pool, and there I have realized that car design, and I just want to show you how easy that was. Perhaps we should switch that off. Open that car, and you see this is very easy. There are just two boxes, a gray one for the roof and the blue one for the body of the car. Then we have four torus for the wheels and the lights in front and the lights in back. And in order to show you how easy it is to extend that model, I want to design an exhaust into that car. How can I do that? You go to my pose, insert an element. It's done, that would be a box. Okay, that's not good. I don't want to have a box here. Therefore, I go to my library and I choose a cylinder. So, this does not look like an exhaust, but it will be in a minute. The first thing I need to do is to rotate it. You see here, there are the axes drawn here. The red one is the x-axis, the green one is the y-axis, and this blue one is the z-axis. Now, in this case, I want to rotate that cylinder in this direction, so I rotate it in the direction of the z-axis by a degree of 90 degrees. Now I have it in the right position. Still, the size does not fit to my expectations, therefore I rescale it a little bit. Okay. Now it's very small and immediately in the coordinates 0 0.000. 000 but I want to have it in the back, therefore I move it a little bit backwards. So we have the green axis in the minus direction. So I move it in here. Then uh, move it a little bit to the right and upwards. And now I have my exhaust here. It's easy, but it already works. Now let's go back to my main project where I have my car depictor already included. You see, my exhaust is already in here and I can, by the visualization, move everything together. I don't need to project the movement of the exhaust, it's just done together with the whole pose. Huh? See, the exhaust is moved together. So this is very easy and very intuitive. But to be honest, I was not very happy about that car here. Therefore, I want to show you at the end that you can, of course, easily reuse your own three-dimensional models. And I've done that here. First step, I will switch the visibility of the car off and switch another car in here. So this looks much nicer. Maybe some of you have such a car at home in the garage. I don't have, therefore I'm not sure whether this is a Mustang or whatever. But in any case, it works in the same way. And I can immediately move it backward, downward. Now, how did I bring it into my depictor object? Again, this is very easy. And I can show you how to do so, I go to the post where I want to import it, press on the button insert element, and at first step I receive a new box here. Instead of a depictor reference, which was just selected out here, I want to embed a file. A file box is not yet existing, this was the dialog here, but now I'm able to search such an object, a wavefront object file from my file system of my computer and I can immediately include it here. Now what you see is that the new car is included, but it's not included as you would expect it, so the model was made in another way. Nevertheless, as this new car is in the same pose I have had before, 
I can immediately reuse the visualization in order to animate it. Uh, where's my visualization? Here it is. So both cars will move forward and downward again because it's under the same control of the pose for which I have realized such a, a movement on the base on that simulated position of the car. Now I hope you have received a first short impression of the CODES depictor. I want to conclude. With the CODES depictor, we have a 3D engineering directly integrated within the CODES development system. So you've, you've seen this is completely integrated and due to the integration it's really easy. So those of you who are not 3D engineers uh, conf um, familiar with uh, CAD tools, it's very easy to work with that. You have a fun, full interaction with the PLC data as you fully access to the IC variable infrastructure on the project and it's very easy to use your own models based on standard objects or on existing 3D models. Now, how can you get the CODES picture? It's available in the CODES store and perhaps we start the link right now here so you get more information on it. The CODES store um, shows you that there is a full license available which costs 1,000 euro. Yes, we charge for that new additional product because it's not part of the standard IC development. You see some system requirements here, so it's running from version 3.5.5.0 of the CODES development system and you need a runtime system with the same version. For the licensing, you need a so-called CODES security key. This should be as well listed in here. Yes, we need the CODES security key, a, a dongle which contains the libraries, but I heard that there was just a question right now via the chat. Is there a demo available? Yes. If you have no license, you can install the CODES depictor package nevertheless, but then you have no configuration possibility. This means in your enterprise, in your company, there might be some developers who prepare for you certain depictor elements and projects, and you, for example, as a presenter or, or as a training guy, you could take that presentations, take that depictor objects, go to your customer and show them, but without having the possibility to configure the movements, the animations. But for training purposes, this is fully perfect. Those of you who want to try out whether the configuration fits to ex their expectations, there is as well a real-time limit demo version available with full configuration functionality. So therefore, you need, of course, as well a code to security key where the demo license key is put on. Now I'm coming to the end of the presentation. I thank you for the attention. We will open the chat still for some minutes, so if you have some more questions or comments, please let us know. And of course, you can uh, reach us via webinar at coaches.com. The webinar recording will be available in our Coaches YouTube channel within the next weeks. Please be patient because we always try to optimize the recording a little bit but as soon as it is available, you will find it in our Coaches YouTube ch channel and it's always a good idea to, to poll whether there are some new contents there. Now, thank you very much. I hope you will now go to the Coaches store, download your Coaches depictor, install it and check it out yourself. And of course, we will be very happy if this new tool will help you to win new customers, to improve your work. Thank you very much and bye-bye.